So in this video, I'd like us to try to calculate this indefinite integral here, have a go with pen and paper, and then you can come back and I'll provide a detailed solution and some comments. So see you in a few minutes. Okay, welcome back. Let's look at the solution. So when I look at this integral, I see a square root of 1 minus x. There's also a square root of 1 plus x, to be fair. And you might think from this square root of 1 minus x to make a sign substitution. But bear in mind, this is not 1 minus x squared. It is just 1 minus x. But we can use algebra to try to rewrite this factor in this form. So inside the root, we're going to multiply by 1. We're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 1 plus x. So we're going to have 1 minus x times 1 plus x, and 1 minus x times 1 plus x is going to be 1 minus x squared. The cross terms, when you multiply this out, will cancel. So in that way, the denominator is going to become something suitable for a sign substitution. The numerator already has a factor of 1 plus x in the root. So if we're multiplying by this, we're going to get in the numerator 1 plus x all squared. So now we take the square root of this fraction and that is equivalent to you take the square root of the numerator and you divide by the square root of the denominator. The square root of the numerator is just 1 plus x. x cannot be larger than 1 and it can't be less than minus 1 for this to be positive. So 1 plus x will be positive. So we just take the square root and write that as 1 plus x. And on the bottom, we have the square root of 1 minus x squared. And we might think about making a sign substitution, but we don't actually need to. Let's see why not. So in the numerator, we have two terms. That means that this is essentially two separate integrals. It is the integral of 1 over the square root. And that is an integral worth knowing off by heart. That is just arc sine of x. And then we have the other integral, which is x over the square root. And that's an integral which you could calculate using a sign substitution. And if you try that, you'll find the integral at the end is very easy. But we can actually calculate this integral by inspection because the numerator here is the derivative of this argument of the root. So we have 1 minus x squared to the power of minus a half times its derivative. And that's essentially going to be 1 minus x squared to the power of minus a half plus 1. We add 1 to the power. And that is 1 minus x squared to the plus a half. So it's going to be something like the square root of 1 minus x squared. And the way I would do it is I would work out what to put here. I've just left a gap by thinking, if I differentiate that, do I get this or just something very similar? So if I differentiate that, I'm going to get a half times 1 minus x squared to the minus a half. So that's this power in the denominator. And then I've got to use the chain rule and I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the argument and that's minus 2x. So remember we had a half and differentiating this, we're going to get minus 2x. So the minus 2 and the half are going to cancel to give us minus 1, all times x. We have the x, but we don't have a minus sign, we have a plus sign. So that's quite easy. All we do is we put a minus sign here, and then when we differentiate this, we will get plus x divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. So that is the second integral. This is the first integral. And that is our answer for the integral. One thing you may be wondering about 
is why we multiplied by 1 plus x over 1 plus x inside the root and could we have multiplied by let's say 1 minus x times 1 uh, divided by 1 minus x and that wouldn't work as well so let me just say say in words why if you multiplied inside the root by 1 minus x on the top and 1 minus x on the bottom in the numerator you would get the square root of 1 minus x squared that's offering up a potential sign substitution but on the bottom you would have the square root of 1 minus x all squared so you'd have 1 minus x so instead of breaking up into two separate integrals what you'd have is the root of 1 minus x squared divided by 1 minus x so the denominator would be a bit complicated and that wouldn't be as good a thing to do so there is a reason why we made this choice and it's really just by exploring such things that you start to get into good habits i think okay on the next side i'm going to give you a couple of exercises to look at so on this slide i have two exercises for you the first is just to differentiate our previous result and then put the two terms together and show it reduces to the original integrand so that's really just a little bit of differentiation and algebra and the second is to convert the integral into a definite integral and calculate it and show this integral reduces to pi and to make it a tiny bit more interesting I've swapped the minus x and the plus x around in here but it doesn't make a huge change to how you perform this integral and I hope you will enjoy doing these exercises. With that, I'll stop the video.